Let me show you how we can go and split objects apart into multiple pieces from an existing Unreal Engine set. So this is something that we come across quite a lot when we have sets that contain something like this couch here that we can move in its entirety, but you might want to move the pillows to a different position. You can't do that because the pillows are not separate. So it's very, it's, it kind of varies how the developers do it. Like in this case here, they've, whoops, what happened there? Like in this case here, we can go and move the table and the magazine separately. So that's kind of what we want, but not all objects allow you to do that. So when you select it and it's just one huge unit like this table here, that's technically made of two tables, you can't move the second table apart or together or things like this here. You can move the whole unit and rotate this whole thing, but you can't take off an individual coffee cup or something like that. So this is what we come up against a lot, and I'll show you how to do this. I'm actually making this video for two of my colleagues at St. Luke Productions. Hello, guys. We're going to go and release Heart of Mercy at one point, and it's going to be beautiful, and everyone who's going to watch it is going to have a great experience. So there we go. I've put it out there. It's going to be good. So let's take this sofa here, and you want to separate these pillows. The first thing you do is when you select it, you can go onto your details panel here, and then you find where the static mesh is. When you click on this little folder icon here, you see where it is in your content browser. And good practice is to not make these changes on the original object, but make it on a copy of the object. Now, also good practice, because we have so many objects in here already, make yourself a folder a new folder, and I'm going to call that one splits, perhaps. And this is all my or separate something like that. And this is all the separate objects that you can generate yourself. So just to go back to the sofa here, folder icon, and then we go and click that left click and drag that or maybe just let's open this up here, left click and drag that into our separation folder and say copy here. And then we have a copy of that right in here. So this is the one that we want to export out first of all. And uh, Blender is going to help us make the separation. But first of all, let's go and see if we can how we can export that out. Right click on this, head over to Asset Actions, and then we say Export. And Export will usually come up with the FBX by default. I think that's a good format for this. There are other options to choose from. Just make sure it says FBX. And then here on my desktop, I'm going to go and put it into a temporary location. I'm going to call this one splits as well. And I will call this one SM Sofa has got save. And then an export dialog comes up. And that has several options. And we probably don't need all of them. So sometimes collision is enabled. We don't have it here, but some objects might have it. And if this were enabled, it means we were to get two meshes. And that's very confusing in Blender. We only need the original one. Animation we don't have to worry about. Export morph tags we probably don't have any, but we can we can do it. Level of detail if that is clicked, also disable that. We don't want to export that either. We only want to have that um, that one static mesh. Under advanced, I would untick these two, and then format should be FBX 2013. The other formats might work as well. Let's stick with 2013 because we kind of know how it behaves. That's that exported. Now we'll switch to Blender. I'm going to use 4.1, which of course is going to be an ancient version by the time you will watch this video because Blender versions come out every 20 minutes. And you know, it's going to be fine. It's going to work in earlier versions as well as later versions. So this is, I think as, if, as long as you have Blender 3.6 or above, this should work. And let's head over to File, Import, and FBX and head over to your splits folder and let's import that. You can leave all the defaults enabled, except for animation, we don't really need that. And there it is. I think there was one option that was enabled by default. I just wanted to make sure it is enabled for you as well. That is pre and post rotation. That is sometimes important on skeletal meshes. Otherwise, going back and forth between Blender and Unreal Engine might not work. So make sure this is also enabled. And here we have our one solid object in Blender. So I'm assuming you're a little bit familiar with it, but uh, what you need to do is click on it so that you have that light orange outline and then you hit 
tab to go into edit mode. And I think we're going to work with faces. So that's this third option at the top here and hit A to deselect everything and then go and see what you want to separate out. So let's say we want to separate all these four objects. So we need a sofa and these four cushions separately. So let's go and split this out with nothing selected. Hover over an item that you want to separate and press L on the keyboard. L as in linked. This is the, the shortcut for select linked. And then it will select this one portion of the mesh. You can do that with, with pretty much anything. So every time you click L, it'll add one more item to your selection. So select all the bits and pieces that you want to turn into a separate thing. So if you wanted to remove all the pillows, you can just go and select all of these and separate them out. I might go and keep them all separate. So I'm going to have the long thing first and whatever is selected. Now you press P for separate and then you can select by selection and then that turns it into a separate object here in the scene hierarchy. So this one we're going to go and call it long pillow or cushion rather. It's not a pillow actually. It's a cushion, <laughs> long cushion. And then you can go and make it invisible. And now you can see it's no longer part of my original sofa mesh. Let's do that with the next pillow cushion as well. So hover over that, select L and then go select P by selection. And then we'll go and press F2 and we're going to call this one cushion one. Make it invisible. Do that with another one as well. L P by selection. And then we're going to go and rename that into cushion two. And that's that. Now we can, whoops, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Sofa, all the, all the cushions are gone. Tab to get out of edit mode. And now we have basically the sofa without the pillows, the cushions. So <laughs> that's a good start with these things invisible. It doesn't actually matter if they're invisible or not, but uh, with the sofa now selected, head over to file export and FBX. And in my splits folder, I'm just going to go and call that one sofa single perhaps. And we can, we've got some options here. You can basically leave all the defaults, but I would go and say export the selected only. You can also go with visible objects. It doesn't matter. So selected is nice if you had other things visible in the viewport. Only the selected one would come out as an export. And this is all we need. We don't need to have the animation, so we can go and take that off. Hit export FBX. And that is that sofa exported without the cushions. Now you can do the same thing with all the others. So if I go and just enable all of them back, uh, no matter what it looks like. So I know it doesn't have materials now, but it's there. they're going to come back. So let's start with the cushion one, head over to file export. I've actually got it on a shortcut which you know makes my life a little bit easier. So cushion one and all the values are already remembered. That's cushion one. And we can do that with cushion two. Actually, before I do that, let me go and show you something else while I'm here. Cushion one will be exported with its pivot point where this little orange dot is. So in the scene center, if you didn't want that, if you wanted to have the pivot point exactly at the bottom of the cushion, you can go and change the position of the pillow here, or you can move the pivot point separately in Unreal Engine. So I'll leave cushion one as it is to show you the difference and just make cushion one visible. And I'll go and use my one on the numpad and just go and move that over here just so that we have a bit of a better pivot point demo here. I'll do that. So this is now the pillow in a slightly better middle position, I say. Still not perfect, but it's it's going to make navigating and positioning it a little bit easier. So with that, export that as cushion two. Same thing as before. And then we have the long cushion. And again, I'm going to just leave that where it is. I'm not going to change the pivot point here, but I'm going to go and export it as uh, let's say call it cushion three. There we go. Export. That's our work done in Blender. There's really no need to save this file. It was just a temporary file. And then back in Unreal Engine, you can go and if you wanted to replace this sofa with the one without pillows, you can go and right click on this. This is your split copy and you can go into re-import with new file. Re-import would use 
a source file that Unreal Engine already knows about. It's usually not working on assets that come as an asset pack because the source assets are usually not delivered with the asset pack. But if you've made it yourself, there's still a reference there to the original source file that you have. So in our case, let's use a new file and pick the sofa single here. That was what we had just made in Blender, hit open. And then an FBX sort of import dialog comes up that is going to ask you, hey, there's some material mismatch here. What do you want to do? Do you want to reset it to whatever it says in the FBX or do you want to just hit done? And I don't think it matters what you pick because you're going to have to add the material there separately anyway. I can go and say reset to FBX just for a laugh and see how that works. And of course, the materials are gone. So if you double click that, you now see that you have your cushion. And in fact, we do also have our materials on here. Okay, good. So reset to FBX is the option that you need to use. So that's good. That's good news. If we wanted to position that into this exact spot, then we can go and select our sofa, select, well, control shift S to save everything. And with our sofa still selected, we can just go and click this arrow icon and that will just replace that asset in our scene. Granted, it's got a slightly different material on it, but I suppose there's an override going on. There, so, you know, you can adjust that, uh, that color there, but hey, it's without pillows. So that's kind of cool. So then cushions even, sorry, not pillows. <laughs> if you now want to bring in those cushions separately, right click into your content browser and choose import at the very top. Then you can go and pick up where we've left off, namely on our desktop under splits. And then these are cushions one, two, and three, and they should all come in now. And uh, these are new imports as far as Unreal Engine is concerned. So it doesn't really know how you'd like to handle certain aspects of it. So usually these days we probably want to build Nanite. This is the thing that gives you the dynamic level of detail feature that Unreal Engine have introduced with version five. Generate missing collision, you're going to get a sort of a collision object, not always necessary, but it's nice to have. And then in the bottom here under materials, we've got something that lets you search for textures and also create new materials for that. We don't want that because we already have existing materials that will work on our pillows, cushions. So you can go and say, do not create materials and search location. You probably also do not want to search for text just because we have them already. So uh, we do that. Import textures we don't need either. Import all, and that should now bring in all the three objects here with a little bit of delay. We do need to set up materials here separately. So before you drag those in to the scene, I suggest you open these up separately and then we have a look um, what's going on. So uh, first of all, cushion one, it looks gray. And because we don't quite know what material was on here before, currently it's giving us this default material of world grit. You can go and open the original sofa from the original folder. And we can copy it from there. So this was called SM Sofa, which is why it was a good idea to not overwrite that because otherwise we wouldn't we wouldn't have that. So we've got here pillow two and we've got pillow one here. Let's just go and use this material here. Copy and then we head over here and paste that right into here and then it should be yellow. That's perfect. Or, you know, pick any other color doing it this way will guarantee that as you drag this into the scene, it already has the material in there. So if you don't do that and just drag it into, as an example, using cushion two here, if you put that in, it doesn't have material and you would have to set that here. Then if you want to have another copy, it would also come in gray. And that's a bit, you know, it's just a little, it's just a little cumbersome. So by opening it first and then putting the material on there manually, why don't you want to do that? copy and then we go paste if that is in fact the material you want or if we wanted to pick something else like maybe the gray here let's go and copy the gray material put that on here and then we have not the world gray this gray yes much better excellent and then we have one more which is the long cushion can we paste that on there perfect okay so now we have that and now we can go and drag these into the set as we want them. So that can go on here. And here we can see this problem with the pivot point. So it's 
this is cushion one and it's sort of further away from the actual object whereas if i go and use cushion two and drag that in i can see that my manipulator is exactly where it should be and i can position it a bit easier than you know doing doing this it's just you know it's just it's just weird so um we fixed this one in blender and that's probably the way to go but if you didn't want to do that you can go and change this in unreal engine here's how we do that just while we're on this topic you can hold down your alt button on the keyboard and then the middle mouse button moves the pivot point temporarily so you can go and move it where it needs to be so in my case i'm going to go and move that up alt middle mouse button click until you're sort of there and you have to do that on the manipulator and this is sort of where i want it ish i'm thinking just have one last look from the side yeah let's say let's say this is where i want it if i click off this the pivot point will be forgotten and reset so to, in order to lock this in so that i can just use this to adjust my object you have to right click ideally on the manipulator because if you right click on something else or an object that isn't that the dialog doesn't come up and the pivot resets so just to let you know that the safest option is to click on your manipulator and then go and say pivot set as pivot offset and when you do that this is now going to have that pivot point at least in this scene so if you go somewhere else and then back to this it always has that pivot point there that is how you split objects so i hope this was helpful next time you come across a problem like that it'll be easy for you to fix because now you know how to do it thank you so much for watching and i hope i will see you next time take care bye bye